E nā hoa makamaka mai Hawaii a hiki aku ini i hau. Mai ka pe ahikina a ke kūkulu komohana. A puni ka honua manakihi e hā a mena pale nā kea o kona pāpā lina. Aloha kako a pauloa. Friends, colleagues and conference attendees from Hawaii to Niihau and to all those joining us from different parts of the world, greetings of aloha to you all. Mahalo anui loa and thank you to Kahaka Ula o Ke'elikolani for the Oli, a traditional Hawaiian chant with which we mark the formal opening of ICLBC 2021 and extend our warmest virtual welcomes from Manoa Ho'ahu and Hilo, Hawaii. I'm Ha'alilio Solomon. I'm Andrea Perez Croker. I'm Jim Yoshioka. And I'm Brad McDonald. We are the co chairs of this, the seventh international conference on language documentation and conservation. We're so pleased to welcome you to the first virtual meeting of the ICLBC. We wish you an enjoyable, productive conference, and we hope you'll learn new things, make new acquaintances, and renew old friendships. But before we begin, we'd like to take a few moments to acknowledge the land upon which this conference is being hosted. On behalf of the University of Hawaii at Manoa and the Department of Linguistics, I would like to offer our leo to acknowledge Hawaii as an indigenous space whose original people are today identified as Kanaka Maoli, Native Hawaiians. It is our hope that as the organizers of ICLDC, we can uphold the values of Make'e Olelo and also support Indigenous communities worldwide in exercising their freedom to reclaim their linguistic destiny. To start us off this morning, we will take a few moments to tell you about the history of the ICLDC, tell you a little bit about what we have in store for this year's conference, and present a few well-deserved awards. After that, we'll share some words of welcome from distinguished administrators of the University of Hawaii, and then we'll hear our opening plenary address. As we all know, this year's ICLDC is going to be quite different from previous conferences. In mid-2020, we made the decision to shift to a fully remote meeting in response to the dangers presented by traveling and congregating during the COVID-19 pandemic. While we are disappointed that we are unable to gather in person to share our experiences face-to-face -face in the shade of the Ko'olau, we are grateful that the online venue provides exciting new opportunities for growth in directions we might not have otherwise had the chance to explore. Since we got our start in 2009, the ICLDC has been the flagship conference of our field. It's become a forum for highlighting successes in language documentation, conservation, and reclamation, for working on problems together, and for creating collaborations and models for best practices. Over the last 12 years, our conference has grown both in attendance and in scope. Back in 2009, we expected that maybe 80 people would come to the first ICLDC, but happily, more than 300 people showed up to talk about their work with nearly 90 endangered languages from around the world. For this year's virtual format, we are happy to say that more than 750 people registered for this conference, far more than we would have been able to accommodate in person. Over the years, the ICLDC has also grown in terms of scope. We've come together to share ways to support small languages, strategies for moving forward. We've looked at methods for interdisciplinary documentation, and we've examined the role of linguistic analysis in the revitalization classroom. We've looked for the connections between language and well-being, as well as those between language and technology. And now, here we are in 2021, gathered virtually for the seventh iteration of this meeting. The theme of this year's conference, Recognizing Relationships, allows us to reflect on the vital role that relationships play in our work in language documentation and language reclamation. And when we speak of relationships, we go beyond those that are typically discussed in language documentation and even beyond human relationships, extending our understanding to the ongoing relationships we have with land, both occupied and sovereign, colonial and indigenous, the relationships we have with ancestors, both seen and unseen, ancient and recent, and the pathways we are forging for future generations to have relationships with us living today. We are delighted to welcome distinguished plenary speakers who will address this topic from both indigenous and academic perspectives. First, 
Candice Kalemamo Wahine Kapu Gala will address this theme by discussing how we can enact a relational accountability that provides a pathway for genuine, deep rooted, and honored relationships that are reciprocated through our ways of knowing, being, and doing. Our second plenary address will take place on Sunday, just before our closing. Wesley Leonard will discuss the future prospects of Indigenous language work, a future where a relational reclamation approach is the norm. We believe that taking time to recognize the importance of initiating and fostering relationships will help to transform the work that we are engaged in to reverse language shift, whether that be as members of Indigenous communities, advocates, elders, teachers, linguists, or academics. And you will see that a substantial number of paper and poster presentations do so from many different angles. We would like to recognize six presentations in particular that were among the top ranked abstracts from graduate students and members of indigenous language communities. These six people on the screen have been awarded our most impactful paper award, which is sponsored by the National Science Foundation. We also want to thank the many people who volunteered to review abstracts for ICLDC 7. We are very thankful for the thoughtful reviews. At ICLDC 5, we introduced the talk story session as a way to facilitate conversation. We encourage you to join these discussions and share your stories and your ideas on how we can address critical issues by recognizing our relationships. We will again feature a series of workshops which provide hands-on introductions to a number of topics in language documentation and reclamation. We're particularly grateful to the National Science Foundation for supporting the workshops and talk story sessions. And we'd also like to acknowledge the special review committee, Raquel Sapien, Daryl Baldwin, Megan Lukaniak, and Nick Teberger, who had the difficult job of evaluating many excellent workshop and talk story proposals. And of course, our sincere thanks go to the facilitators of the workshops and the talk story sessions as well. Since the beginning, ICLDC has partnered with Heo Olela Ola Field Study, who offer a unique firsthand experience into Hawaiian language revitalization programs in Hilo, Hawaii. This year, Hei Olela Ola and the ICLDC have decided to coordinate our events together. And there will be two plenary sessions during ICLDC on Friday and Saturday, where our friends in Hilo will take you inside the Hawaiian language revitalization programs virtually. These include tours and live panel discussions about the foundations of the Hawaiian language reclamation movement through Hawaiian medium education. And at this time, I'd also like to announce the winner of the 2021 Delamon Award. The Delamont Award was created to recognize early career language documenters for their achievements in creating high quality documentation collections. The winner of the 2021 Delamont Award is Carolina Gerzech for her archived collection of documentary materials on Upper Napo Quichua. Her presentation on her collection is part of paper Q&A session 5.8 on Saturday at 9 a.m. Hawaii time. The Delamont Award Committee also selected four honorable mentions Andrew Harvey, Christian Doler, Florian Leone, and Jorge Emilio Rosas Labrada. Congratulations to Carolina and to our honorable mentions. And now for an overview of how the conference will run. Your sketch program will be your guide and give you access to all presentations. You may have noticed that our conference schedule is split into morning and evening sessions, Hawaii time. We did this to better accommodate presenters and attendees in different time zones worldwide. You may not be able to attend absolutely everything, but we hope that you can experience a good sized portion of what the conference offers and attend sessions you really want to. To help in this endeavor, we had our paper presenters upload their pre recorded presentations on our ICLDC YouTube channel, and our poster presenters upload their poster PDFs to our Discord server so you could view them at your leisure before the conference. 
Over the next few days, you will have the opportunity to participate in live Q&A sessions with the presenters to further explore the topics they have shared. In the paper Q&A sessions, up to three presentations have been scheduled during 30-minute slots. Presenters will give a brief one to two minute summary of their talk to remind attendees of their topic and main points, and then a session chair will field questions for the presenters during the remaining time. In the poster Q&A sessions on Discord, you can move freely among the posters, posting your questions in the presenters' text channels and hearing their answers in their voice channels. For more information on how these will operate, please see the Guidelines for Participants section on our website. We will have a number of special events taking place live throughout the conference, uh, the first of which will be our opening plenary with Dr. Candice Gala and later our closing plenary with Dr. Wesley Leonard. Both will be screencast live here in Zoom webinar format, uh, and we encourage you to participate in the text chat while watching and post your questions for the speakers in the Q&A section, which will be answered afterwards as time permits. Our previously mentioned workshop and talk story sessions will be held live as well. Each workshop will be offered twice uh, during the conference and be in either Zoom webinar or Zoom meeting format, depending on the presenter's preferences. We will likely be recording one of each workshop session to add to our archives. If you are at one and you do not wish to have your video or audio recorded, we recommend having them off and participating in the chat instead. For talk story sessions, the emphasis is on deep discussion of meaningful topics in language documentation and revitalization. And as such, these are the only sessions we place an attendance cap on. Most sessions will take up to 30 participants. However, if the presenters have given their okay, the limit might may be a little bit higher. Attendance is first come, first served. Uh, uh, if a talk story session is full, we recommend going to an alternate session or trying to attend later. Each talk story session is offered three times uh, during the conference. Due to their often personal and sensitive nature, talk story sessions are never recorded during ICLDC. We wanted to mention that in Zoom rooms one and two, where the majority of our plenary sessions and sign language presentations will take place, we will have live interpreters and captioners on hand from Isle Interpret. In our other rooms, we will have Zoom auto captioning on. Uh, attendees can turn closed captioning on or off, given their preference in all of these rooms. Speaking of sign languages, we have a special panel on Complex Dynamics and Relationships in Sign Language Documentation that will take place here in Zoom Room 1 later today. One of the things we will sorely miss from the face-to-face -face conference is the opportunity to chat, network, and form bonds over coffee or at one of our receptions. But we have built in some virtual social activities, which we hope will satisfy. During non-presentation times, we will be having hula lessons on Thursday and Friday, as well as our usual graduate student mixer on Friday. And for those who just want to take a break, continue a conversation with presenters, or meet new colleagues, we have our virtual lounge open throughout the conference day. Finally, if you should require help during the conference, please consult with our guidelines for participants or send an email to icldc at hawaii.edu so our team can assist you. Before closing, we would like to thank the wonderful Student Steering Committee members who you will be seeing during the conference. This conference simply would not be possible without their help. We are so grateful for their hard work and innovations. We hope you have an enriching and fulfilling experience at ICLDC 7, and before you're done, please provide feedback on our online evaluation form to help us plan for ICLDC 8 in two years. Links will be available in Sketch and sent to attendees after the conference. Mahalo nui loa. Thank you, Jim. In a moment, we will be honored to hear some welcoming remarks from some of our top administrators at the university and college levels. But first, we would like to acknowledge our many sponsors and supporters who are listed on our website and displayed here on the screen. 
We are especially grateful for the support from the National Science Foundation, as well as the College of Arts, Languages and Letters, the Department of Linguistics, the National Foreign Language Resource Center, all from the University of Hawaii at Manoa, and to Kahaka Ula o Ke'e Likulani, the College of Hawaiian Language at the University of Hawaii at Hilo. As you may be aware, this conference is part of a multi-pronged effort to support language documentation and conservation, which also includes an academic component. Here at UH Manoa, we are very fortunate to work in an environment that truly celebrates language, be it the ongoing support for the revitalization of the indigenous language of these islands or the more than 25 other languages taught on campus. The University of Hawaii has consistently supported language documentation and conservation efforts, including this conference. Thus, it gives me great pleasure to introduce Dean Peter Arnada to welcome you on behalf of the College of Arts, Languages, and Letters. Please join me in welcoming Dean Peter Arnada. Oheo ko ina hoa kipa vale, mena hoa ha ialelo, e ko ko a mai nei, ma zoom wali no, ma muli o COVID, no ka hiku, wa ka aha kuka ka aina, no ka malama, me ka palapala olelo. E ya mai kel velina a yo aloha, a ko ka kulanui o Hawaii ma manoa, a keo hoi, a ko ka mahele kala olelo, a aloha kako. Hello and aloha conference participants and friends. I'd like to welcome you to the seventh International Conference on Language Documentation and Conservation. This year conducted, of course, because of COVID via Zoom. O Al or Peter Renata, Kadini o ke koleke no nahana no eao, na olelo, a me katmo olelo, me kakula nui o Hawaii mama noa, ke koleke ho loa i ho ho o no ho no ho ia i ho ne makahui puana o na koleke arts and humanities, languages, linguistics, and literature, me. School of Pacific and Asian Studies. Ha oli no ku unao i ke kona ia e ho kipa mai ya o ko pakahi na mea i kipa mai ana me ke aka me ke ho maka ana o ke ia ahu kuka kao aina au kalani ko i. Kahi e hui nui ne o ko no loea me ia hana malama a palapala o lelo e noho ae ala i o ia nei o ka poe 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 honua. I'm Peter Ranada, and I'm the Dean of the College of Arts, Languages, and Letters, a new college in our first year, formed after the merger of the Colleges of Arts and Humanities, Languages, Linguistics, and Literature, and the School of Pacific Asian Studies. It's my pleasure to, to welcome you to, this, to the start of this renowned international conference that brings together you, experts in language documentation and conservation from across the world, to UH Manoa and the Department of Linguistics. Lana ku manao he alo he alo ko mako velina ana aku ya ko mekia ke mekia avava makalapu akalani hoi o yo ho i o manoa ke kihi o ho mahobe o i ka hui ho ana ae o ke ia aha kuka mahobe aku o alua makahiki ke akaku loa o covid it's my hope that we'll be bringing you back and welcoming you to our campus after COVID at the next biennial gathering to host you in the beautiful and historically important Manoa Valley, which is on this picture behind me. Let me conclude by thanking you for the work you're doing on the ground activism and scholarly research combined on behalf of the richness of human languages and the many that are under threat and that have contributed so much to the tapestry of the human experience. Let me also underscore and thank our Department of Linguistics, a jewel at UH Manoa and in our college. The work they do and the work that all of you are doing is vital and essential. And for it, I thank you and I wish you a very productive conference. Aloha. Thank you, Dean Arnada. I would also like to introduce a longtime friend of the ICLDC, Dr. Laura Lyons. Dr. Lyons is the former Dean of the College of Languages, Linguistics and Literature, and is the current Interim Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs. Dr. Lyons is also a professor in the Department of English, where her research focuses on cultural studies and post-colonial literature. Please join me in welcoming Vice Chancellor Lyons. Aloha kakahiaka, good morning. It is my honor to be among those welcoming you to the seventh International Conference on Language Documentation and Conservation. 
I'm speaking to you this morning not from Manoa, but from my home down the road in Moili Ili. The IDC has always impressed me in large part because it takes seriously the work of an academic conference and yet does not treat that work in a generic or business as usual kind of way with workshops, talk story sessions, a field school, and a mix of academics, community activists, and practitioners, um, not discrete categories to be sure, the ICDC always strives to enact the values that upon which it is based. The conference theme, recognizing relationships, seems a particularly apt extension that builds on the work of past conferences and yet speaks to the moment that we are living through. The COVID-19 pandemic prevents us from meeting in person, but it nonetheless offers an additional context for thinking through the difficult work of recognizing relationship without eschewing responsibility. In these islands early on, Pacific Islander communities were among the hardest hit by the pandemic. It was not until Pacific Islanders themselves and language practitioners, and again, these aren't discrete categories, were enlisted in the effort not just to disseminate information, but also to help those communities reimagine for themselves important events and practices that build upon their sense of relationship to each other, that the infection rates leveled off and eventually went down. We know that the pandemic is disproportionately affecting indigenous communities and endangered languages. The work that you all do has always been critical, but the pandemic reminds us that the work of language documentation conservation and revitalization has long been a life and death matter. As you think through the responsibilities that attend recognizing relationships, it is my hope for you and for all of us that you will think both in the midst of and beyond the pandemic, that you will consider the forces that shape your relationships and how to work in a reciprocal way given those contexts, and that you will also engage in the collective work of ensuring that those relationships are not fleeting, but rather sustainable and lasting. Work that involves being respectful to and approaching with humility, the crucial and intimate connection between people, culture, language, and the natural world, and most particularly with land. Mahalo to the organizers, and I hope to see all of you at the keynotes and other sessions. At this point, we are ready to move on to our first plenary presentation. After the presentation, we'll have some time for questions. Before introducing our plenary speaker, we will hear some special words of welcome from Representative Kai Kahele, originally from Hilo, and coming to us today from Washington, D.C. E na hoa kako, i na olelo, ku lana lana, aloha nui kako. I extend my sincere aloha and mahalo to all of you for your ongoing efforts to document and revitalize our treasured languages. While I have the wonderful privilege of being native Hawaiian and my culture has served as a guiding light throughout my entire life, like many in my generation, I did not grow up speaking Hawaiian. Given the impacts of colonization and the suppression of our language and culture. However, thanks to the steadfast generations of Kupuna, or elders that came before me and the tireless efforts of language revitalization advocates like yourselves, I am proud to say that Olelo Hawaii is alive in my home today. The timing of your conference comes on the heels of us having celebrated Mahina Olelo Hawaii or Hawaiian Language Month just this past February. And last week, I had the opportunity to speak to my colleagues here in Congress about the importance of supporting our world's languages that are central to our cultural diversity and ultimately our shared humanity. For Native Hawaiians and so many other indigenous peoples, our language is essential for our people to live and thrive. In fact, we have an olelo no eau, a proverb that says, ika olelo no keola, ika olelo no kamake. In the language rests life, in the language rests death. If you want to extinguish a people, you extinguish their language by taking it from the ears and mouths of future generations. You take it away from their children. So how do you revive a language? 
the same way they tried to extinguish it. We share it with our children. Firekeeper started private preschool language nests, or Puna Naleo, and in 1978, Hawaiian became an official language of the state. And in 1986, K through 12 Hawaiian language immersion was reestablished in Hawaii's Department of Education. These early language pioneers continued to rebuild the fire step by step, action by action. And by the 80s, we graduated our first bachelor's degrees in Hawaiian language. And from less than 50 native speakers under the age of 18 to more than 25,000 now self-identifying as Hawaiian language speakers today, our fire still burns and it is growing. These trailblazing Hawaiian language pioneers would not have accomplished all they have without a clear understanding of the importance of pilina or relationships. The enduring pilina they have with each other, grounded in an unwavering commitment to ensure that the Hawaiian language shall live, has no doubt propelled them over daunting hurdles and obstacles. Pilina with other indigenous communities nationally and internationally has afforded collaborative learning and advocacy opportunities. Pilina with leaders in various sectors and industries from education and science to government and media are fundamental to shifting perspectives about the place and capacity not only of Alala Hawaii, but all indigenous and endangered languages. I therefore applaud your conference organizers and leadership for focusing on this notion of Pilina with this year's theme of recognizing relationships. My aloha again to all of you as you work to build stronger and broader Pilina, blazing trails together to keep our treasured languages burning bright for generations to come. Mahalo. We will continue to stoke the flames of Olelo Hawaii month by month, year by year, generation to generation, because, Mr. Speaker, Ika Olelo no Keola, Ika Olelo no Kamake. In the language rests life, in the language rests death, and our resolve is greater than ever to ensure that our languages will live on. Eola mau ka Olelo Hawaii, amena Olelo o Ivi apaoloa, mahalo, and I yield back. Aloha, it's my honor to introduce to you Candace Kalei Mamo Owahine Kapu Gala, a girl who was born and raised in Pahala Ka'u on the island of Hawaii, graduated from the Kamehameha schools and went on to higher education at the University of Arizona, where she got her graduate degrees in Native American linguistics and indigenous languages revitalization. I know Candace, of course, or Kale Mamo, as also a colleague where, when she taught at the University of Hawaii at Hilo in the College of Hawaiian Language in courses uh, linguistics. Uh, so Kale Mamo is very familiar to all of us here in Hilo. Uh, and uh, I know I always say to Kale Mamo, Kale Mamo, you've lost your accent in from Pahala, you've become uh, a major linguist now. So now that you can speak all of these languages, don't forget the Pahala dialect. Mahalo nui loa kalei mamo for sharing your thoughts with us this morning. Aloha nui.